Hello and welcome back to this episode of Science of Mass Effect Andromeda, uh, where we've just woken up uh, from our 600-year cryo sleep, and things seem to have gone horribly wrong, including a brief short uh, outage of the artificial gravity systems. Uh, and before we continue on, maybe good to note artificial gravity, like I said, uh, sci-fi trope, actually kind of hard to do in real life. Uh, at least in the way you usually see it in sci-fi. Uh, right, so in uh, Mass Effect you can explain it with the Mass Effect, you know, if you can manipulate massive objects and things you can kind of possibly make the floor appear very massive and cause artificial gravity. And I'm not sure how you balance it out with the rest of the ship, but okay, uh, you could do that, conceivably, uh, with some engineering uh, feats. Uh, but the only way we know of doing it in real life at the moment is by spinning things around, right? If you have a, a pod on the end of a long arm and you spin that around, you get centrifugal forces. Um, and then you know, if you're inside the pod, it feels like you're being pushed down against the bottom of the pod. Uh, and that is indistinguishable from gravity. So it feels like you're, uh, you know, there's gravity pulling you towards the floor uh, and that's you know how we could make artificial gravity uh, in principle we should be able to do that now only thing is you need very large structures because you need a long enough arm and spin around fast enough right because the gravity that you feel depends on how long the arm is and how fast you're spinning around so we need to make uh, big expensive structures and that's why we haven't done it yet uh, we have the ISS for example but you have artificial gravity on the ISS we need to make the ISS much bigger than it is now and become way more expensive than it already is um, but yeah so uh, if you read sci-fi books quite often you know, they do go in for all these kinds of devices or they just have people in zero g but for movies they usually have artificial gravity and, and don't really bother explaining how it works I've also done a little bit of looking up uh, names. So Hyperion, name of Shupion, was a uh, Greek god, a uh, sibling of brother of Kronos, aka Saturn. Uh, he was the father of the sun god Helios. And he's kind of an obscure figure, he's not mentioned that often, uh, although there's also famous poems about him by John Keats. Uh, but other than that, he doesn't really have a big role in mythology. Uh, Helios. Uh, was the son of Perseus and Andromeda, uh, name of the cluster of stars we've gone to. Um, well, I'm not sure cluster is the correct uh, astronomical term. I think cluster usually is used for galaxy structures. Okay, so for now we are very firmly sticking within Greek mythology, uh, which is fine, but it does make you wonder, you know, are there, you know, was everybody in charge of this Andromeda initiative really? Uh, big fan of Greek mythology uh, and also how does uh, this Lexi fuel being the only Asari around um, so before I check out my sister who I'm casually not caring about too much let's check out our new codex entries so Andromeda Initiative oops check Initiative was built by the efforts of thousands it devoted years of time uh, yours is actually very short for a project like this. Encounters resources to reach Andromeda Galaxy. People, places, and organizations made the Pathfinder's mission possible. Uh, you know, uh, getting into orbit took us decades of work, depending on, on where you want to count the start of that. You know, getting to the moon took a decade, roughly. Uh, so, yours is not even that long. Thousands uh, is also not that many people. Uh, if you look at new aircraft like in new fighter jets uh, like a joint strike fighter you know already takes tens of thousands of people Let's give you a few for numbers arc species multiple advanced civilizations made the journey from milky way galaxy to andromeda uh, arc very much a biblical term in reference plant locations helios cluster contains the world's other place is for the pathfinder um, Interesting that there is a the Pathfinder, which is kind of an almost mythological term, right? And, and um, well, mythological term, but it, it kind of changes the tone a bit, right? You could have, you know, called them the 
chief exploration officer uh, or you know exploration team lead or something and then you'd have kind of a very a bureaucratic managerial feel but instead it's the pathfinder kind of makes it a bit more mythical interesting technology ships and vehicles all right so andromeda initiative let's start there we have known associates we have sam simulated adaptive matrix sam i am an artificial intelligence interesting so this codex is apparently written from the point of view of sam It'll be interesting to think about that, keep that in mind to your reliable Sam's narrator. I am an artificial intelligence. This is also interesting because in the original Mass Effect, right before the events, um, artificial intelligence was very much frowned upon, right? Illegal uh, in all Citadel sp uh, Council space, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, possibly due to you know, bad experiences with the Geth and such. But apparently Andromeda Initiative is okay with AI. Fair enough, but one wonders how they managed to develop that without people kicking up a fuss. Next is coordinating elements between Pathfinder Alec Rider and the rest of his team. Okay. Um, quantum processing power is used to conduct on-the-spot scans of alien worlds, assist in scientific study or tactical situations, and monitor the team's weapon and equipment. All kinds of useful things. Um, and Quantum processing power means that apparently Sam is running on a quantum computer. It's a computer that makes use of quantum effects to speed up calculations. Right, so in a regular computer we have bits, uh, which are stored in, in devices that can be either on or off. Right, can be in one of two states, or they can have high voltage, low voltage. Uh, but in quantum mechanics, things can kind of be in combinations of states, so they can be one and zero at the same time. Uh, and people are working on this now. Quantum computers are in development, and they're kind of once you can do certain types of calculations already exist, um, you kind of need to step back a bit from your idea of a computer, right? It's not like a laptop that you use, but as a device that can perform calculations, then you already have some forms of quantum computing. Um, and then you can you know, make use of this on or offness you know, to, by being in multiple states at the same time. You can theoretically speed up calculations because you can do multiple calculations at once. Uh, and that increases the computing power. Um, so useful, you know, more computing power means faster processing of all those data and scans. So Sam is physically on Arc Hyperion, insecure server banks known as the Sam node. Primary connection is Alec Rider by neural implant. Effectively serve as a mission computer for all team members during Pathfinder operations. Also collects and analyze data new resources, collect later study, and is authoring update Pathfinder team codex based on available information and discoveries as they are made. So quite complex for current computing, right? Just collecting data, computers can do fine and you know database queries and that, but actually turning that into a, a Wikipedia article, let's say, that, that reads naturally is, is way beyond current computing. The initiative. Dominic Bainchild, the visionary billionaire Jen Garson, and our initiative was conceived as his personal dream, or their personal dream, and a desire to prove humanity's capabilities beyond the military power demonstrated in the first contact war. Okay. Which is, of course, where we, we humans and Caltaturians. Carson officially began planning initiative 2172, that's her, announcing her ambitious goals of launching a pioneering colonization effort to Andromeda within 20 years. That is indeed super ambitious, especially since Far FTL travel is not really possible in Mass Effect, right? We need the canoe short, relatively short range FTL, but for longer range we need um, the thingies. Mass Effect relays. Uh, initiative. Faced struggles. Uh, Stay until 2080. After some influx of investment and marketing strategy, interest initiative grew afresh. Investment is an interesting word to use because investment usually applies a return on your investment. Um, and unless you're going along yourself, you're not going to get a return. Right? Take 600 years to get to Andromeda, therefore also 600 years to get back. So if there's any kind of physical return, it's hard to imagine what that could be. And uh, that would take 1200 years to get back. You're dead, unless you're in a sorry. 
construction of arcs is completed rapidly thereafter, and the initiative officially launched in 2185. Why does the initiative only launch when, unless they mean launch in the center of launching the arcs? Uh, mission is to bridge Andromeda and Milky Way, containing sustainable, inclusive civilization for scientific development forward by centuries. Um, if it, if you, you're developing the science yourself, and it only takes you five years, by definition it was only a five-year development of science. Okay. Uh, Characterize this initiative as continuing the search for humanity's next horizon. I think there's plenty to discover within the Milky Way still, but okay. Uh, go to Andromeda. Sure. Uh, you should block. Yep, yeah, so... Um, guns work by having a block of metal and just stripping off bits of that and accelerate them using mass effects. Um, okay, all kinds of... Uh, stuff to the uh, creator. Jean Garson founded the Drum Initiative, it's humanity's wealthiest entrepreneurs in the Milky Way. Uh, so this is apparently privately funded. Uh, maybe slightly modeled on Elon Musk. Uh, vision. Traveling to new galaxy it's set Andromeda Initiative in motion, ignoring skeptics and naysayers. Well, you have to. Uh, Garson spent vast sums of money building acquiring necessary technology and ships to make long voyage possible. Private venture entirely funded from Garson, so as to remain free from any government oversight. 25. Garson began a long journey to Andromeda aboard the support hub Nexus. Again, Greek origin word. In a speech given on Eve of departure, she remarked on the collective knowledge and history represented by the arcs. Carry all these things like the home tools of an artist to our great empty canvas. To Andromeda we go to paint our masterpiece. And Garson will be the overall leader of the initiative upon arrival. Yeah. Um, what makes us so sure Andromeda is an empty canvas? Hmm? Probably plenty of species living there. Um, so intergalactic travel has been discussed for centuries. Sorry, Solarian led expeditions for most of the years, but not enough interest funds or engineering hurdles. Uh, Andromeda's initiative use AI, like myself, allowed many of the technical problems to be solved. Mm, okay. Possible. Uh, invited to disprove on Turian hierarchy and the system's alliance. Yep. Building a fleet of dreadnought sized arcs of private funding required delicate negotiations with the Citadel Council, I can imagine. And the Vox's technology essential to survival in Andromeda was often acquired by unorthodox means, i.e., stealing. Um, Nexus departed first in 2085, scored a small squadron of fighters for protection. So you're kind of creating an invasion fleet in a sense, right? Followed by four arcs to comprise the initial launch wave. Additional vessels were in development, including a quarian led ship accommodating multiple species. Construction was slowed due to diverse requirements, and the second launch wave was delayed. Initiative observers remained optimistic. Okay, so we don't know how long it will take. Pathfinders. Roll Pathfinder. Pathfinder is the tip of the spear, very military metaphor. For exploring new worlds. Um, you know, if you're coming in peace, why are you at the top of a spear? Plenty survey is typically long term multiple team process. Initiative found an alternative, thanks to Alcarani's AI research. Individual equipped with the best training and technology available, an AI partner can run complex studies in seconds and 100 test simulations a minute. Depending on what you're simulating, that's either impressive or not. Um, with AI support, pathfinders can determine within hours where their plant is suitable for habitation and direct the nexus as to what colonist block stands best chance there. Um, one wonders why you need a human pathfinder at all. Why not just have fully automated drones to do this? Um, and you know, general suitability for habitation, you can just do from atmospheric spectra and that. Pathfinders are trained to improve the viability of potential planets, initiate first contact with unknown species, find suitable outpost sites, and handle any external threats before the first colonist touches soil. Improving viability of potential planets in particular um, sounds like a, a long-term 
geoengineering project, so you need you know lots of people. Uh, you know, if you have to really alter planet's climate or things like that. You know, assessing viability and the potential for improvement, you know, makes sense to have a pathfinder do that. But if you say, okay, we can make that better, but we need to do these stuff, why not just have a team do that and move on as pathfinder? Uh, so we are the tip of a spear, but also uh, a diplomat uh, and a surveyor and a soldier, because you're handling any external threats. Presence of a Pathfinder's research that the plant can be settled safely with high expectation of success. Surely not the presence, but the approval. Arc species. So we have a Sari. Uh, this is going to be lots to go through. Um, so we'll go through that some other time. Or I'll do it off screen and then see if there's anything interesting. Arc Hyperion, main vessel for carrying human settlers beyond Andromeda. Named after Greek mythological figure associated with the knowledge of celestial bodies. Hyperion represents a breakthrough in intergalactic travel. All privately funded by Jane Carson. Two and a half million light year voyage. The rigors of that. Um, question is how rigorous the rigors will be since most of that is outside galaxies, which as far as we can tell is pretty empty space. An Odyssey Drive Core technology, ODSY. Sounds like it's a callback to Odyssey, which is a really, really strange thing to name your space travel things after. And we also do that in lots of you know human uh, current spaceflight missions. We've had the, the Mars Odyssey and that. The Odyssey is a Greek myth about a person who sails from Western Turkey to Western Greece, which is not that far, okay, you have to go all the way around Greece, but you know, should take you about two months uh, or so, I guess, at, at the time, with their technology, maybe three or so, but you know, a couple of months. It took Odysseus 10 years, and he lost 99.99% .99 of his crew along the way. To be specific, he had like, I think, 10 ships originally and, and thousands of soldiers. Odysseus is the only one that makes it home safely. Why would you name your space mission after that? But apparently people like doing that also in real life. So you can make a 600 year voyage at FL speeds. Now we can accommodate 20,000 settlers and crew. And we left 2185 on the command of Captain Nozomi. Done. Very good. Um, you can come back to that some other time. For now, let's look at the datapad. Message from Captain Dunn, attention Iberian personnel. After 600 year voyage, good news is we're exactly where we're supposed to be. We arrived in the Helios Cluster, Dromana Galaxy year 2819. All stages medical personnel should report for duty immediately. With Pathfinder mission team revival priority and prep its members for field reconnaissance. Reports of an unusual celestial phenomenon in the cluster are being investigated. Updates to follow. Okay, so that maybe has something to do with the stuff going on here. Uh, but first. Let me take a look. First five minutes in Andromeda. We'll give it a second for the processor to shut up. Did the seals break? No. Physical integrity looks good. Scott. Is my sister okay? Sarah's fine. Her vitals are strong. But the revival procedure was interrupted. Got you, sir. I don't like the sound of that. Don't worry. It just means the process could take a bit longer than usual. Sam? My connection to Sarah's implant was suspended. However, her pulse, respiration and brain activity are all normal. To be on the safe side, we'll need to keep her in a low-level coma for a while. Then let her body regain consciousness naturally. She'll be fine. Glad to hear it. Thanks, Lexi. You keep us updated. Ryder, I'll wait for you at the door, whenever you're ready to go. Okay, we'll just talk to some people first. Don't worry, Ryder. We'll take care of her. She'll make it. Good to hear. Uh, very important thing, what is the quick save button? Is 
Is there no quick save button? Huh. Oh well. No, we can't save this anyway. Okay. What about? We can run an intravenous line into the pod. Standard nutrient package. See how their system responds. Will do. I'll start slow and go from there. And if necessary, add boosters to the line. We can't risk pulmonary arrest. Pulmonary arrest is you stop breathing. How is that related to an intravenous line of food that you're putting into a pot? Hi there. I'm Gian Garson, founder of the Andromeda Initiative. I'm here to welcome you to a whole new galaxy. The good news is, the hard part's over. We're here. Huh. If you have any questions now, just ask. Your current location is Ark Hyperion, housing the human population. Ark Barchero, the Solarian vessel, confirmed departure in 2185. The Asari ship, Ark Lucinia, confirmed departure that same year, as did the Turian Ark Natanis, embarking in 2185. Okay, so there are four Arcs, Solarian, Turian, Asari, and human. And they all departed safely. It's interesting that the opening ration talked about humanity's dream, because apparently there's been quite some buy-in from the other major uh, species. The selection process saw the Andromeda Initiative evaluate thousands of potential habitable planets within the galaxy. After discovering an unusually high ratio of potential candidates, or Golden Worlds, the Helios Cluster was selected as our destination. Now you are a part of the first wave of ARCs arriving in Andromeda, our new home for humanity. Once the Pathfinder team's assessment is complete, Habitat 7 has been selected as the most likely candidate for colonization. Okay. The Pathfinder is responsible for exploring and assessing new worlds for outpost placement and settlement. Each arc is led by a Pathfinder who represents their species. The active duty Pathfinder assigned to Arc Hyperion is Alec Ryder. Current duty roster shows you are assigned to the Pathfinder mission team, Specialist Ryder. Doki. The Andromeda Initiative encompasses all colonization efforts, including ARCs, Pathfinders, Outposts, and the Central Support Hub, the Nexus. The current location of the Nexus is unknown. Status of Outposts are unknown. Hmm. I'm Gian Garson, founder of the Initiative. I think it's important we take a moment to reflect on the principles that brought all of us together. It started with a vision of a better future. A vision that you shape. Life in Andromeda can be anything we dare to dream. And I'm proud to help make those dreams come true. Drop me a note sometime. I'd love to hear how we're doing. That is incredibly vague on what the founding principles and values are. Right? Anything we dream. We've got 100,000 people with us who have their own dreams. So, you know, that's not going to work if they all want something different. So there has to be some kind of collective idea of what life in Andromeda is going to be like, right, for this to work out, otherwise you're just going to have endless conflicts. This is an incredibly vague statement of values. Very, I mean, some people agree with, yeah, better future, yay, we want a better future. But what does a better future actually mean? What does it look like? At present, Arc Hyperion has arrived in the Helios Cluster. Further mission updates are offline due to technical difficulties. As Recon Specialist, you are tasked with supporting the authentication of Golden World sites through exploration, mapping, and scientific analysis. Currently, you are to report for duty on the command bridge. Thank you. Um, yeah, to further that, how do we know, you know, Andromeda is empty for us to do what we want in, and it isn't, you know, already entirely claimed by alien species? It sounds amazing, doesn't it? Right up until you lose gravity. Well, if you're gonna hit a small ship back like that, uh, should you? Huh? Because you can run. <coughs> nice and easy. Just take deep breaths. What's that? We're getting reports of floating. Control is online. We're waiting. <laughs> waiting. Really up with the gravity. Still in stasis. What? Vitals look good. What is it? It's been six hundred years. We're in Andromeda. It worked. So far, so good. So imagine being those technicians. You'd be the first to wake up. And there's no one to help you with it. Except Sam, I guess. 
We shot chicks on your should do wow, nothing. Sweet dreams. Weird. How do you mean? I don't remember dreaming or anything. One minute I'm in the Milky Way getting ready to sleep, and the next. You're two million light years away. No joke. We really flew that far? We really did. Welcome to Andromeda. Uh, I mean, I guess it's unbelievable. Got any food? That you kind of weren't entirely sure of it working. I find it hard to process, but you know, you knew what was good, what you signed up for, I hope. Thank God nobody was in this. Engineering, this is Cryo Bay. We've got a pod that was damaged when we lost gravity. You'll probably want to send something over. So it was interesting that they called cryogenic sets implies that people in stasis are being kept there by being frozen. Uh, which is a, a motif you see often in sci-fi for how stasis suspended animation works. Um, it's possible that it could work that way in real life. But they need you on the Pathfinder mission team. Let's get you ready to go. So uh, of course, we have no idea in real life how to do suspended animation. It makes sense to go for freezing, right? Because that's how we keep food fresh and such. Uh, but freezing also damages things. The water it freezes, expands, and that can basically rupture your cells. Uh, and that's not a good thing, as you might guess. Um, but there are also ideas about you know, how you could stop that from happening. Uh, so, it's possible we would uh, be able to develop a suspended animation system based on freezing people and then unfreezing them later. Like, like well, hey there! Hell of a wake up call, huh? Didn't expect that first thing out of stasis. Makes two of us. Hang in there. Enjoy your nap, Ryder? Don't think I'll need sleep for the rest of my life. Maybe another decade or two wouldn't have hurt. <laughs> right. Talk to you later. Message from you, Carson. Hello, traveler, and welcome to your first day in Andromeda. This is the dawn of a new era for all of us. As you recover from stasis, know that you're in good hands. In a few short hours, you'll be leaving the Hyperion and joining thousands of your fellow colonists as you chase your fortunes and build the new life you've always dreamed about. It's been a long wait, but I promise you it will be worth it. So, maybe, maybe this is just me, but this is all so vague. Are they just like dumping us? Well, you're in Andromeda now, go chase your fortune, have fun. This looks broken. We're getting reports the water flow control is off. We're having lost waiting for the rough generators. Like what? Something big. Those generators are hardened. They take a hell of a lot to overload them. On the bright side, nobody's eaten in 600 years. No projectile wow. Morning, Ryder. Or afternoon. Or... I don't know. Yeah, that's an interesting point, uh, which I don't suspect the game was going to, just, um, to spend much time on, but you know, what do you use? I'm a colony man myself. And what time system they're going to use? You had some trouble there, didn't you? Fighting? Yeah, I lost some friends. Figured it's time for a fresh start. Well, welcome to your new life, eh? Okay, so we're after the Geth attack on Eden Prime. Good to see you, Ryder. <sighs> uh, sorry, still waiting for some coffee. We're getting reports the or, or maybe it's before, but so before the Reaper's attack, I guess. To know. First. Oh, that one. All right. Let's follow Cora to the bridge, and then it's be uh, I think a good place to end the episode. You ready? Two minutes. Uh, do let me know in the comments below what what you think of length of episodes, whether they're too long, too short. What's wrong? We've got a surge in power readings. Wow! And then things automatically explode just because of surge in power. That, that hey, seems like a bad here. design. Whatever hit the arc fried everything. We have to balance the power load or it could explode. But we don't know where the fault is. Doesn't this. Ryder can find it. He has a scanner. Quick, Ryder, use it to locate the fault. 
On it. I'll try to get readings on the second conduit. I'll hey, try to run get it on this one. I'll override the safeties. Got it. There's no indication of a fault in this component. Why are you Keep looking. overriding safeties? This equipment is operating. If things are already breaking. Have to be here. Any competently designed safety would protect against these power surges. If we don't balance the current, we're looking at a complete black Rider, try scanning the whole conduit. Look for the fall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Relay 2C shows damage from a temperature spike. Found it! Bad relay! Rider, can you go reset it? We found internal heat warping. Uh, how'd you know? You can find warping, how'd you know the heat? I suppose you could analyze it. And if you're Sam, you can analyze it fast enough. Actual coupling for distributing currents. Okay. Face coil. Uh, this is kinda techno bubbly ish, but I don't know enough about electrical engineering to tell how techno bubbly ish. There! It's reset! Thank God. That could have been the end of everyone in the cryo bay. This is kind of... Good job, Ryder. Now we can get to the tram. Weird that... Um... A... A... Fault like that... Has to be solved this way. Um... We're already quite capable of... Creating, you know... Electric systems that can automatically balance themselves out. And you think they'd have kind of safety overrides built in to prevent this kind of thing happening if they're competently designed. I'll allow that to create some nice narrative drama, tension moments, and a good excuse to learn about using your scanner. Barely an Andromeda, and we're already scrambling. The adventure begins. Event tracking logs, ultimate logs, port run 20 deaths. Procedures confirmed, stasis lockdown engaged, anomalous comm sensor readings report locked, trajectory of correctors, course correction marks K, sensor default detectors report locked, default repair failed. Does it then wake people up or what? I've lost contact with the other arcs and the Nexus. That's bad. All of this does not look good. Go ahead and take us to the bridge. Okay. Come control, report. We're drifting. Flight controls aren't responding. First priority is stopping these outages. Mainline power's been knocked out. We're on reserves, Captain. They won't last. What's our position? Unknown. We lost telemetry. Sam, we need eyes out there. Attempting to adjust sensor array. Alec, please. You may be Pathfinder, but this is my ship. Captain, the protocol's clear. In the absence of communication with the Nexus or the other arcs, we proceed to our appointed golden world. Solid ground. If it's even out there. Nobody said anything about running into an energy cloud. And that's just a wild guess what we hit. Alec, I need to assess the damage. Stop the bleeding. We've got 20,000 people asleep on this ship. Let's give them a chance to wake up. Can you blame her? Captain's a captain. She is the captain. I think she gets the final word. Well, he might. This isn't about having the final word. Yes, sir. We're coming through. Like figuring out what My the heck's going on. God. Would be good before is you like try to. Golden world? That's Habitat 7. New Earth, if we're lucky. All of our long-range scans told us it was in the green zone. Perfect for human settlement. It doesn't even look the same.
She's right. It looks pretty dicey from here. Are we sure about those scans? It's a good question. Things can change. It's been 600 years. Sam. Wouldn't you update from this the issue? Is dumping our senses. Planetary conditions are unknown. We're marooned. 20,000 souls adrift at sea. And when the power runs out and stays out, we need to know if that's safe harbor. And if it's not? As Pathfinder, it'll be my job to find an alternative. It's what we trained for. But if this goes well, we are already home. All right, just make it quick. Harper, the rest of the team should be awake by now. Have them spin up two shuttles. Planet Fallen 30. Yes, sir. A stubborn one, isn't he? He cares in his own way. Enough to give him a chance. I suppose you're right. He is our Pathfinder. If this doesn't work out, we'll need him more than ever. I need an ETA on our sensor repairs. We're blind out here. Alright, so I think it's a good point in the episode. Before we do, quick notes uh, on dialogue in the Techno Bible. Telemetry means data you get from My sister's far away. She missed this. Are all the riders adrenaline junkies? I guess it's in her blood. She beat me into the world by one minute. Couldn't wait to get started. Well, don't worry. I'm sure Sarah will pull through. When she does, she's gonna want stories. So, let's get out there and find her some. Right, you'll want to get your helmet. And maybe stop at the good luck rock before we go. The what? It's an old superstition of your dad's. How does she know about that? But not me. Okay. Maybe she'll record with him. Alright, so let's just quickly wrap up. Um, telemetry means data from far away, usually on the status of an object, so losing telemetry and not the same as losing navigational data. Um, you could just say our navigational sensors are offline. Okay, just one of the picking points. Um, find it interesting that the, the lines of communication aren't of, of, of authority or, or that's what I'm thinking of are, don't seem to be super clearly defined. Um, you know, it should be clear in the situation who's in charge, who gets to make the final call of what to do, whether that's the Pathfinder or the Captain. Um, and why the heck don't they have a backup plan? Right? If you've identified that this cluster has like thousands of potentially good worlds, and you know it's going to take 600 years to get there, uh, that's basically you're going to have no other choice than to settle on these worlds soon. Um, you know, why don't you have a list of options ready? Like, you know, if this world isn't good, we're going to try that world, and then that world, and then that world, and that world. You know, I mean, I, I like planning ahead, but th that's something you should have. Um, and, and I've also, you know, if you're ever thinking about signing up for something like this, which of course is not going to happen very much, very soon, but... If you are going to trust your life to people, that is something to look for, you know. Do they have a plan for what will happen if it goes wrong? Uh, or do they just assume everything will be fine? Right? It's it's what um, Commander Hetfield of the, the ISS uh, fame, the astronaut, he wrote this book. Uh, and one of his chapters is called The Power of Negative Thinking, right? Told lots about I should always be positive, look on the bright side, be optimistic about things. But in engineering, uh, you're trained to do the opposite, right? Any good engineering design, you know, if you have an aircraft or a spacecraft, you ask, well, what if this goes wrong? What if this goes wrong? What if that goes wrong? What if this goes wrong? What if this thing breaks? Right? And then you work out what will happen and how you could fix that so that you already have a plan beforehand, right? So that you can be assured that even if something does break, things will still work out. And, you know, yes, you kind of need to break a little bit of that spirit to, to, you know, just jump into the unknown of going to Andromeda in the first place, but 
you tr want to kind of try and merge that with you know, at least having some kind of backup plan. Anyway, I think that's more than enough for this episode. Uh, thank you for joining me once again, and uh, see you soon next time, where I guess we will be making Planetfall on our golden world, which is looking decidedly non-golden at the moment. Thanks for being here, and see you next time.